Hello everyone! Welcome back to another online edition of SFCAC Sunday School. I'm so happy that you could join us today. We will learn God's Word and have a simple activity that you could do together with your family. There will be one lesson for everyone. It is a blessing that we can still worship together in this time, growing in our faith and learning what God is teaching us, like how we can love Him and love each other. Let us start in a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for being our God. We praise you today because you keep your promise. As we listen with joyful and thankful hearts, let us learn more about you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, we're going to learn about the very beginning of God's plan to create a nation that would serve Him. A man named Abraham lived with his family in a place called Ur. Many of the people who lived there, including Abraham's father, Terah, worshipped idols. They did not know the one true God, but God saw something good in the heart of Abraham. He wanted Abraham to leave the false idols. So God told Abraham to leave his country and his people to go to a land he would show him. Do you think this would be hard to do if God said this to you and your family? It might have been easier if Abraham knew exactly where he was going, where he would live, or what the place would be like. But Abraham didn't know any of those things. After God told Abraham to move, he gave him some promises. God told him, I will make from you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. God told Abraham he would be the father of the great nation, but Abraham and his wife Sarah had no children. How could Abraham be a father of great nation? Abraham did not know how it was going to happen, but he believed God was able to make it happen. God also said that all the families of the earth would be blessed through Abraham. This promise was fulfilled hundreds of years later when Jesus was born from the family tree of Abraham. So Abraham made the choice to pack up all his belongings and his family and obey God. Abraham along with his father, his wife Sarah, and his nephew, Lot, traveled to Haran where they stayed for a while. Then they moved to a place called Sheshkem in the plain of Moran. It was then the Lord appeared to Abraham and told him he is going to give this land to his children. Abraham believed God and built an altar to worship him. Worship is a response to God's awesomeness, power, wisdom, and love. God told Abraham to look at the stars. God said that just as Abraham could not count the star, he could not be able to count all those in his family, his children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, and so on. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and did not have any children, so he was a little confused. But Abraham believed God's promise and he would be the father of a great nation, and that except brought him righteousness, right standing with God. It was probably very hard for Abraham to continue to believe that God could keep his promise and give him a child. In fact, he had to wait 25 years from the time he left Haran until the promised son was born. We may not always understand when or why God does things the way he does, but we can know for sure he will do the things he has promised. For today's activity, you will need the activity sheet which is in the description box below. All you have to do is follow along and fill in the blank. Alright, let us begin. We can learn about God's promise in the Bible. Let us discuss three of them. Starting from Isaiah chapter 41 verses 10, it says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God promised to be with us. That does not mean God has promised we will not have trouble or hard times. We live in a broken world that is full of sin. In fact, Jesus promised that in this world we would have trouble. But God does promise to be with us in every situation and give us comfort and hope. We can face whatever comes because our powerful God is always with us and will help us. In 1 John chapter 1 verses 9 it says, 
If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. God promised to forgive our sin when we confess them to Him. God already knows our sin, but He wants us to come to Him and repent of them. When we do, He will completely take it away. We can be right with God because of this promise. According to Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 it says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable thing you do not know. God promised to answer our prayer and do good things for us, more than we can imagine. This does not mean God will give us everything we want, but He has promised to listen and answer us, and we can trust Him to give us what we need. Sometimes the best answer is yes, and sometimes it is no. Other times the best answer is for us to wait. We can trust this promise and know God cares and hears our every prayer. God has made many more wonderful promises to us and we could find them in the Bible. Just as God made and kept His promise to Abraham, we can trust He will keep His promises to us too. Have any of you ever moved from one place to another? Maybe you moved from one city or state to another one or even from one house into a different one. Change like that can be scary. When God told Abraham to move, he didn't give him the details, just the instruction. But Abraham trusted God, and so he obeyed. God also gave Abraham some promises that seem impossible to keep, but nothing is impossible for God. What did Abraham do after he and his family moved? He built an altar and worshiped God. How do we worship God? Some of the way we worship God are through our praise, through serving others. By giving our time and money, we can worship God and honor Him for being faithful to His promises. Has anyone ever made and then broken a promise to you? How did you feel? Unlike humans, God is 100% reliable 100% of the time. We have an entire Bible full of story of how God made and kept His promises. According to Titus chapter 1 verses 2, it says, In the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. This verse tells us God cannot lie, and He promised eternal life before the world began. This is an amazing truth that we can rely on. God kept His promise to Abraham, and He will keep His promise to us. The more we learn about God, the more we can trust Him to keep His word. Why is it so hard for us to believe God will keep His promises? It is hard for us as humans to understand how someone could keep every single promise made, but God is not a human. Abraham not only had amazing faith in God, but he also acted upon the trust he had in God. Abraham trusts God to keep his promises, even when they seem impossible or took a long time to come true. We can trust God's promises by reminding and following the example of Abraham. Our actions should be a reflection of the words of faith we say we have in God. We can believe His words and trust Him. Your next step is to trust God to always keep His promises to us. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this Sunday's lesson. Even though we cannot be together at this time, we can still grow our faith and worship our God. Thank you for joining me today. Make it a great week and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.